I'm up here, I'll show you where my grandfather's big camp was. Okay, so this is my new friend Juan Walker, right? Oh. Okay, he's my guide for the day. A local, he's gonna show me around. We are headed to Daintree, which is about uh, a little over 30 kilometers from uh, Mossman, is that uh, like no, give or take? Just under 30. Just under 30, about okay. 28, 29k. Okay. And uh, we're gonna do some exploring there. And um, so this was this the Coral Sea that we just that was the Coral, Coral Sea, sea? Back there, yeah. And then uh, due due east is the Great Barrier Reef, exactly, out in that direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which well, I'm the Great not... Barrier Reef runs right on the coastline. Right here. The coast. You can okay. actually walk to the Great Barrier Reef oh, okay. on the low tide here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I'll probably do that on my next trip because I just don't have a lot of time this time around. But so right now uh, we should be able to walk out to one of the reefs out in front. Oh, today we're going to do that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. excellent. Okay, so we're yeah. going to walk to the Great Barrier Reef today. Excellent. When George Alfredstone Dalrymple discovered the Daintree, he wrote in his journals, this was the best river scenery he'd seen in the whole continent of Australia. Mm -hmm. And you can see why. Yeah. I would have to agree with him. And I haven't seen that many rivers in Australia. Okay. I'll see if I can climb down here. Yeah. See all these little red fruit here? This is oh. raspberry. Oh. So if you just hold on a sec. Yeah. Let's see if I can get another this car again. Let's see if I can This is wild raspberry fruit here. Oh, okay. So they eat him. They see that little bit of pulp there. Okay. Little bulbs. Just throw it in your mouth and suck all the flesh out of it. You can spit the hair out if you want or just swallow it. It doesn't really hurt you. This is the main village here, this is the main street. If you blink, you'll miss this place. <laughs> it's tiny, one street. You've got the big barramundi, this side. The timber gallery next door. The timber gallery used to be an old butter factory. When they used to mm. do dairy cattle up here. And on this side you've got the tourist information centre, cafe, general store and village restaurant. Crockeye Cafe. That's nice. Really small little township. Yeah. And then down the bottom of the township, you've got the river. The bush just here. But before it was cleared for cattle, rainforest, massive big red cedar trees used to be growing in this uh, place. Some yeah. of these cedar, you know, hundreds of years old, you know, uh, 40, 50 meters in height, massive old trees. Down where that red hill is down there that's been cut into, yeah. that was in my birthplace of my grandfather. That's uh, where okay. he was born on top of that red hill. Um, when he was born, part of the passage of right. His umbilical cord and placenta was cut. That was hung in a coconut tree where he was born. That was his place. That was where he wanted to be. Mm. Whenever he was stressed, worried, he was always drawn back to this area. Mm. When he died, that palm tree fell. Really? So that was the connection to him. Wow. Um, but yeah, Julembo is the name of this river. Beautiful river system, this place. So this is called the Australian black bean? Australian he said, black okay, bean. one bite of this when it's raw will kill you because it has cyanide in it. But Juan was just telling me that uh, they have to, you they, they, you boil it first and then you rinse it. Or cook them. You, you cook them. Roast it. Roast it. Grind it up. Grind it up, yeah. Leach it in running water. Leach it for three, at least three days. At or least until three the days. poisons come out. And then the older women will test, test them. It. Yeah, they'll, they'll just roll it around in their mouths. If they taste the poison, they'll spit it out and put it back in to leach more. So the, and then this is the one of the starches, one of the main starches? This is one of the carbohydrates that the people okay. needed through the year. Okay. In season now, so this yeah. time of year black bean was used. And then later in the year you have your yams, cycads, walnuts, different things come on through different stages of the year. Okay. And then the men would hunt, you know, animals and That's right. Men would protein. chase the game, so big animals, cassowary, all these big yeah. game, birds, snakes, lizards, goannas, fish, sea turtle, dugong, all that stuff is hunted by men. Okay. Uh, women treated and prepared the starches. Okay. And then the little kids, the teenagers and stuff, they would just fish in the river for okay. everyday food to feed everybody. Okay, well, so everyone was involved in something. Everyone had yeah. to work. Okay, yeah, yeah. great. This is called Janbal. Jumbo. Janbal, blue Jumbo. kwandong. Mm. Janbal. Not condom, kwandong. Kwandong. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, with your kwandongs, blue fruits, beautiful color, you have to feel them. Pick them up, give them a squeeze. When they give, they're soft like that one there. Have a bite. Mm. It's a very tardy, flowery flesh. Do green. I eat, eat the whole thing or eat just the just a, blue skin just and it's a, got a thin layer of green flesh, yeah. big seed in the middle, so you just have to mm. suck it. Mm. Very tardy, very, tart. very yeah. uh, flowery texture. But this is a traveling food, so again, when the people travel, move, they're all hardies up, right? Only that one there was good. 
So yeah, you just throw them out the window yeah. and you're done. Yeah. So yeah, with the fruit when they used to travel, they'd give bag them up, carry them with them when the kids are hungry, feed them this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Here you got World Heritage Rainforest. And then here you got World Heritage Great Barrier Reef. So they actually meet here on the beach. It's really cool. And so I'm gonna follow Juan out onto the reef. We're gonna try to walk out onto it for a bit. He was just telling me that this was all, when he was growing up, it was all, you know, colorful, just the different colors of coral. It was like red and blue. And um, unfortunately, when they developed up here, there was a lot of runoff, which came down and killed all the coral. Um, but, you know, at least you can still see the reef here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it goes right along to the edge. Yeah. Off that hill face. Oh, yeah. So, this is where the rainforest, the Great Barrier Reef, World Heritage Listed Area, meets the Dainty Rainforest, World mm -hmm. Heritage Listed Area. Yeah. Only place in the world with two World Heritage Listed sites join in there. Yeah. Very special environment. We'll go for the walk across all these rocks and okay. just up here a bit. Have a look at that. Yeah. Have a little look at on. Okay. So, so is this where the reef begins then, or where does it actually start? The reef begins a long way south, oh, okay. and right up to the tip of Queensland. Oh, okay. So this is just part of the chain then? Part, part of the, the chain. Oh, okay. probably dead, sit in, dead in the middle now. Oh, okay, okay. I'm here with Juan uh, close to his house. We're actually uh, at uh, the beach. Um, that's the Coral Sea. You can sort of see it in the background there and um, I was just getting a spear throwing lesson you can see the the two spears there um, and we were actually gonna go out further onto those uh, you know into the shallows mud flap. the mud flaps flat flat mud flat <laughs> mud flap is something like something you find on a car mm -hmm. or a truck um, <laughs> and we were gonna head out and then we saw the squall start to move in so um, we decided to wait for a bit and just let it pass and um, hopefully uh, it'll pass quickly and then we can get out there and start uh, spearing some crabs and what else is out there? You said Mussel. Mussels. Um, crabs, mussel, maybe even a stingray. Maybe even a stingray. And then we'll cook those up for lunch, whatever we get? Yep. Alright. And some damper and some other stuff up at the house as well. Oh sweet. So fresh seafood for lunch. Okay, after a long hard day of fishing and hunting for crabs, this is what we got. We got how many? Four? One, two, Three. yep, four. Four total, and then a lot of uh, other clams and... Underneath. Underneath. Which are... Let's see, yeah, we're grilling Can those. Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go, yeah. So these are, tell me what these are Oral, again. Oral shells. Oral shells, okay. This is your cockles. Cockles. Periwinkles. Periwinkles. And mussel. Mussels, yeah, that we got from the mangroves, correct? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Full amount of mangrove. And how much um, is all of this, like you said that each crab is worth about $120. About $110 a kilo. 110 bucks. Yeah. A so kilo. about 110 bucks a crab. So we made about uh, 440 bucks. Yeah. It's not bad for a day's work. Easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're and about to enjoy one. You still got one that you're gonna have for dinner tonight? Oh yeah, yeah. This that is a big one's... angry fellow we pull out the mangroves. That's yeah. <laughs> we'll call him Rambo. Yeah, like Rambo. Rambunctious, <laughs> like Steve Irwin's. Yeah, he's a little wild. He's not happy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I hope it tastes delicious. It will. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah. Very good. Nearly done. All right. Okay. Okay. So we're about to enjoy a seafood meal. Caught fresh from the coast.